Hello and welcome to video 4 of our course on mobile data collection using the Kobo toolbox. My name is Wilfred Ngwa. In our last video, we used a sample questionnaire on the adverse events following immunization to design a form using the Kobo toolbox online form builder. In this video, we will see how to use the Kobo toolbox XLS form builder to design the same form. We will see how to add multiple languages cascading drop-down lists, position loops, skip logic patterns, and lots more. Without taking so much time, let's get to business. The Kobo Toolbox XLS form is a standard form created to help simplify the authoring or designing of forms using Excel or any other spreadsheet program. In simple language, it is an Excel workbook which makes it possible to create very complex electronic forms. Let the word complex not scare you. However, the designing of forms using XLS forms requires familiarity with some easy to learn syntax, which we will look at in a bit. Once your form has been designed in Excel, all you need to do is to upload it online when creating a project. Each XLS form or Excel workbook basically has two worksheets, the survey and the choices. A third optional worksheet, the settings worksheet, can be used to add additional specifications to your form. The EpiGuider help file is an XLS form which we have designed to help you create your projects easily. Besides the regular worksheets, we have some additional sheets for the different question types, operators, appearance, and position loops. Let's take a detailed look at the sheets in the workbook. The survey worksheet gives your form its overall structure and contains most of the contents of the form. It accommodates the full list of questions and information about how they should appear in the form. Each row usually, but not always, represents one question. The columns represent different parameters or features. We will look at each of these features when we start designing our form. The choices worksheet is used to specify the answer choices for multiple choice questions. Each row represents an answer choice. Answer choices with the same list name are considered part of a related set of choices and will appear together for a question. This is particularly great because it allows a set of choices to be reused for multiple questions so long as they have the same list name. It is worth mentioning at this point that both the survey and the choices worksheets have a set of mandatory columns that must be used for the form to work. Additionally, each worksheet has a set of optional columns that allow further control over the behavior of each entry in the form. How essential these additional columns are depends on how you want the form to behave. Every entry must have values for each of the mandatory columns, but the optional columns may be left blank. For the survey worksheet, the three mandatory columns are type, name, and label. For the choices worksheet, the three mandatory columns are list name, name, and label. One thing to never forget when designing forms in Excel is that the syntax you use must be precise. For example, if you write choices with an uppercase C instead of a lowercase, or choice instead of choices, the form won't work. The settings worksheet, which is an optional worksheet, is used to add additional specifications to your form. On this worksheet, you can add a title to your form, set the form ID, set a specific language to default if you are using multiple languages, and specify the version of your form if you intend to maybe do updates to your form as time goes by. The question types, 
Operator, appearance, and position loop worksheets are not at all related to your forms. Their presence in this workbook, however, does not affect the functionality of your forms. I added them so that you can easily refer to them when designing your forms. They are quite useful and I use them regularly. The question types worksheet contains a list of some frequently used question types and information on how to use them when adding your questions in the survey worksheet. The operator worksheet contains a list of operators, their usage, on which column to use them in your survey worksheet and an example for each type of operator. The appearance worksheet contains a list of appearance attributes, the question type you can apply a particular attribute on, and a description of where best you can use them. Lastly, the position loop worksheet provides you with information on how to create a loop. Loops are questions that repeat. For example, let's say you want to collect detailed information like the name, sex, and age of each member living in a household. You can set a loop to have these questions repeat n number of times based on the number of people living in the household. That's cool, right? Now that we have gone through the EpiGuider help file, let's move over to designing our form. You can download both the EpiGuider help file and the questionnaire we will be using from the EpiGuider website. The link to the website is in the comment section below. I have here displayed an empty EpiGuider help file and our questionnaire. To begin the designing of our form, let's go to the settings worksheet and give it a title by replacing title here with reporting form for adverse events following immunization since this is the title of our form. We leave the default language to English. To begin designing, let's move over to the survey worksheet. The default questions I have here will automatically collect information on the ID of the device used when filling the form, the start time following data entry, and the end time following submission of the form to the server. That said, our first question is the AEFI reporting number. This question takes an alphanumeric input, so I will set the question type to text. If I go to question types, I copy text, come back to my survey and paste here. The next item to fill is the name. I will give it the name rep num to represent reporting number. This name is what will show up in your final database as the variable name. It therefore has to be unique, so no two names in the name column have to be the same. Ensure that this is short but yet understandable. Another thing to note is that the name takes no spaces and shouldn't start with a number. The next column is the label in English. This is what will appear on the form for the data collector. So it should match exactly the question on our form. I'll give it the name AEFI reporting number. The next is the label in French, which I will paste here. Don't worry, you can write anything if you don't understand French. Then we have our hint in English and then I will add in our hint in French. At this point, we are done with the first question. Let's save our Excel file at this stage to the desktop. Then we create a new project so that we can preview what we have created so far. So I go to File, then Save. So here we are in Kobo. I will go to new project. I take upload as an XLS form. I browse to my form, which is on the desktop. And I click on open. As you can see, the project name is reporting form for adverse events following humanization. It has picked up the name 
from the form. You can add a short description, a sector, or a country. For now, we'll leave all of this blank and just click on Create Project. So to preview my form, I click on the preview here. So Kobo loads my form. As you can see, the title is here, Reporting Form for Adverse Events Following Immunization. And then we have our first question. And here you can see that we can choose a language. So if I choose Francais for French, you see our question automatically changes to French. And the hint also is in French. I will end at this point so that you can download both files and come up to speed. When we meet in the next video, we will continue adding some cool stuff to our farm. Thanks for watching. Remember to hit the subscribe button. Tell us what you think, like and share our videos so others can benefit. Remember to stay safe in this COVID time.